Oh, are some people angry that I am criticizing the Democrats? Well, my advice to them is go get a good therapist. You people are a bunch of hard stop. They should for every time you from their ministry so if you are pouring sick guilt to say they're false prophets, well, then they're shut up. Grace in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We really need to talk about Father Frank Pavone. If you don't know him, he's a Catholic priest from New York who's currently the National Director of Priests for Life, an anti-abortion organization based in Titusville, Florida. You've probably seen him before on social media posting some forehead tweet or wearing his MAGA hat on a live stream, uh, but as we put the Trump presidency behind us, I feel like it's important to look at Father Pavone's actions, the issue with his lack of accountability, and why his words are so problematic coming from a Catholic priest of all people. So if you read Father Pavone's bio online or watch his pre-stream intro, it's pretty clear that he's put a ton of time and energy into the anti-abortion movement. It's something he's clearly very passionate about, uh, from the Rachel's Vineyard organization to talking to Mother Teresa and more. But unfortunately, there's been some questionable decision-making, some very unpriest-like social media posts, and just a general refusal to accept oversight of his organization that have led to more than a few clashes throughout his priesthood. You can find plenty of articles about him online, about the time he tried to start his own religious order, uh, the time he was suspended from active ministry in 2011, the Vatican coming in for an apostolic visitation of the priest for life in 2012, uh, and even Cardinal Dolan saying he wanted nothing further to do with the priest for life in 2014. Of course, he refutes pretty much all the stories of times he's refused oversight and accountability and instead chalks it up to... You know this fake news, the president has exposed the, the fake news. There's also fake Catholic news. Uh, they don't belong in journalism. You guys, first of all, you should repent, and secondly, you should resign. In 2016, the real fun began. Father Pavone went full MAGA mode and joined a Catholic advisory group for Trump's presidential election. He made international headlines when he thought it'd be a good idea on the day before the 2016 presidential election to place the body of an aborted baby on an altar and then proceed to live stream a 45 minute teaching on the evils of abortion. Negative reactions to this stunt were pretty widespread and Bishop Zurek of Amarillo, Texas, which was the last diocese that Father Pavone was known to be incarnated under, released a statement denouncing his actions, but reiterated an important distinction that the priests for life are not a Catholic, but instead a civil institution, and not technically under the diocese's supervision. Before the 2016 election, you know, I showed people the body of an aborted baby. Well, you know, I got tens of thousands of comments thanking me for that. Thank you, Father, for showing the truth. Aren't we supposed to show the truth? How is this evil going to end if we don't show the truth? And then they said, oh, but there was this big backlash, you know, this big backlash of people. And then Father Frank apologized. I did not apologize for showing the baby. Uh, well, what, what in the world should I apologize for, for showing the truth? So you may ask, what diocese or bishop is supervising him? Uh, it's certainly not Amarillo, where he reportedly is not in good standing anymore. Uh, it's not Orlando, despite Father Pavone moving the Priest for Life to Titusville uh, in 2017. Instead, if you go to the Priest for Life website on Father Pavone's page, there's a helpful link that says, Father Frank is a priest in good standing. And it says he was transferred out of the Diocese of Amarillo and granted the opportunity to continue to carry out his pro-life work under a new and supportive bishop. But it doesn't name who that bishop is. After Father years Frank of butting heads with bishops and playing hot potato between America. different dioceses, uh, the answer is unfortunately no one is supervising him. And that's where the problems with his gospel of MAGA begin. After Trump won in 2016, most of Father Pavone's content, both on his live stream talk shows and his podcast, began revolving around Donald Trump. His Twitter also began parroting much of the same divisive rhetoric that President Trump was sharing at the time. In June 2019, Father Pavone posted a podcast that had the word Trump in the episode title for the first time. It was his 129th episode of his End Abortion podcast, and it was titled Trump Decision to Stop Use of Tissue of Aborted Babies in Government Research and More Victories. 15 days later, the hashtag MAGA appeared in a title for the first time as well. After that first podcast with the word Trump in the title, he would release 579 podcasts over the course of the next 591 days. Uh, and most of his titles and content shifted from looking like this and this to more along the lines of this, this, and this. Which brings us to the 2020 election. Father Pavone made headlines yet again when it was announced in January that he was appointed co-chair of the Pro-Life Voices for Trump Coalition, and again in April when he joined the Catholics for Trump Advisory Board. 
If you're wondering why it feels so strange to see a Catholic priest posting so much content, joining an official campaign, and advocating for a specific political candidate, it's because there are specific guidelines in both the Catechism of the Catholic Church and the Code of Canon Law that prohibit it. From the Catechism, it is not the role of the pastors of the Church to intervene directly in the political structuring and organization of social life, and it should always have the common good in view and be in conformity with the message of the Gospel and the teaching of the Church. From the Code of Canon Law, most especially, clerics are always to foster the peace and harmony based on justice which are to be observed among people. They are not to have an active part in political parties. Father Pavone has vocalized multiple times that he feels that his participation is out of a, a sense of moral church. obligation. A, a tweet of his from totally January 2020 says, when the church fails to speak up in the political realm, we end up with totally a godless, godless politics and an irrelevant church. Father Pavone announced in July of 2020 he'd be stepping down from his positions on the Catholics for Trump advisory board in compliance with a request from the Congregation of the Clergy. Pavone obliged while reaffirming that while he was stepping down, it does not indicate the slightest change in my advocacy for the president. He went on to insist that his support for Trump will only increase because this is not primarily a political advocacy, but a moral one. And increase his support, he did. It took only two months after that statement, for his variety of outlandish tweets and messages, to warrant another statement from the Diocese of Amarillo, who unfortunately continued to experience backlash from this rogue priest. The posts that got Father Pavone in the most hot water were a tweet calling Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden a expletive loser, and a tweet from August 2020 where he said he would be ready to hear the confessions of those who vote hashtag Democrat, but we are trained that in the absence of repentance, absolution has to be withheld. These tweets at the time were certainly controversial, well, but in like my Biden opinion, says, Father oh, Frank Pavone Catholic has said much worse things on this live stream podcast. So what? The problem is he puts out so much content, it's hard to keep up with. And after the results of the 2020 election, which let's just say Father Pavone didn't necessarily agree with, uh, it created even more crazy content. No, Joe Biden has not won the presidency of the United States, happen, was broadcast you know, by Father Pavone in a, in a, in a on November 9th, week, about two days after nearly every projection made him the winner. Strengthen your confidence in a President Trump, Trump victory, in. came on November 17th Honestly, with no president-elect, incredible anomalies in 2020 anything. election, and a lot prayers for President Biden Trump, hashtag stop this deal, hashtag walk know, away, again, coming back to back on November 23rd. To give you an idea, Periscope, the platform which Father Pavone uses to live stream, only displays the 100 most recent broadcasts on their web platform. If you go on their app, you can see he has over 2,600 live streams. Um, but Father Pavone's 100th live stream, if you look on the web browser, was 16 days ago. That means he's done 100 streams in 16 days. To be fair, a lot of his content is streamed multiple times, like Prayers, Decade of the Rosary, and Reparation for Impeachment Sham. It was this novena that he started on January 11th, along with the prayer he released following the events of January 6th, that really started setting off red flags for me about Father Pavone. When I read through the text of that prayer on one of Father Pavone's websites, uh, it felt like a parody of a prayer. It felt like propaganda. It was like Trump himself had taken his little Sharpie and scribbled in some edits before Father Pavone sent it up to Jesus. And it was the format of Father Pavone's message in prayer that really moved me to feeling like I needed to say something. Side note, they've actually taken this prayer down off their website. Luckily, they just replaced it with a general prayer for Donald Trump. I'd also like to point out how ironic this part of the prayer is. And prepare even now for future elections in which we will vote out of office all those who do not belong there. Considering what happened literally the very next week, but that's besides the point. So with a little more than a week until the inauguration of Joe Biden, did Father Pavone decide to pray a novena for unity or peace in our nation? or prayers to honor those who died on January 6th at our nation's capital, or what could really be powerful, maybe some prayers of reparation for the terrible sins committed by those rioters who believed they were acting in Jesus' name. Jesus Christ, we invoke your name. Amen. Amen. Nope, Father Pavone kicked off a nine-day novena of prayers of reparation for the damage, for the evil, for the wickedness that is embraced and perpetrated by the Democrat Party. And like I said earlier, Father Pavone has been in hot water before plenty of times, but I think a big reason why more action hasn't been taken against him or his ministries is because besides people who post tweets like this, normal people aren't listening to his videos and his podcasts. But I did. I listened to all nine days of his novena and I could not believe my ears. Listen, we are in a civil war. There, there's no, this is America's second civil war. There is no no two ways about that. And then with, with the China virus, and that's exactly what we should call it, the China virus, 
because it came from China and they unleashed it on the world. China virus. The China virus. China virus, you're going to be really triggered by these broadcasts. And the encouragement of masks is another thing. Look at you understand that if, if you're able to think, Democrats, very few of them are able to think. Pelosi, she claims to be a Catholic. She's not more, she's no more Catholic than this table that's next to me here. This piece of wood is Catholic. You godless, disrespectful, America-hating, freedom-hating people of the left. Tens of millions of people who voted for crap because they have betrayed us. Betrayed our church, our nation, our freedom, our children. They should retire from ministry tonight. Never show their face again in a church. Our economy, our military, our veterans, our unborn. So don't give me this garbage about hatred and oh, you're not following the teachings of Jesus. Those who are saying that don't know the teachings of Jesus from the man in the moon. We need to be politically correct and show that we're con concerned about the carbon in the air. You'll see me at three o'clock in the morning in your nightmares. You watch. It's really not hard to tell where Father Pavone is getting this sort of character and these mannerisms from. It's also yeah, really not much of a stretch to say that Trump is clearly Father Pavone's idol. idol. Uh, he's worshiping, you know, worshiping a sort of golden him. calf, although Boy, I'd say he's got a bit of an orange really tip to it. If you watch just about any Father Pavone live stream, he either starts or ends with a clip from the Faith and Freedom Coalition Conference in 2016, where Donald Trump simply just says his name. That's pretty much it. That's the clip, and that and alone uh, is worth starting and ending almost every live stream with. He's just stuck in this mindset that Democrats equal evil. They should be doing community service for the rest of their lives. And Trump equals savior. Any of them that doesn't don't recognize those kinds of accomplishments, they are blind. His idea of unity is actually just eliminating the voices yeah, of those really who disagree with him. Keep their mouths shut if they want to speak up for, you know, peace and uh, respect. And everyone who's a member of the Democratic Party needs to leave the party right now. Everyone who's an elected official of the Democratic Party needs to step down from that public office, like right now. And the party, this, this, it, 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 we don't need it in America. And I think it's all time to go ahead and just stop the charade that Donald Trump was. He's the most pro-life president we have ever had. A truly pro-life president wouldn't have finished his term with a truly appalling death penalty rampage where they executed 13 people since July. To put that in perspective, from part of Justice Sotomayor's defense, the federal government will have executed more than three times as many people in the last six months than it had in the previous six decades. Look, Donald Trump speaking at the March for Life does not make him actually pro-life more than me giving a talk at a library makes me actually a book. If former President Trump and Father Pavone, for that matter, truly believe that every human life should have as equal dignity from God and should have, therefore, equal protection under the law. That's it. That's it. Then a truly pro-life priest or president would believe that Lisa Montgomery has the same right to live as an unborn baby in their mother's womb. And if you still want to argue that Trump's pro-life, it probably wouldn't help to tell you that Planned Parenthood's funding actually increased under the Trump administration. The point of all this is that Father Frank Pavone has clearly lost his way. He's more focused on this MAGA movement. Are you ready for Trump 2.0? Presidential terms come and go. Elections start and they pass and they end. But this movement goes on, the movement called MAGA. We're going to be more determined than ever to make America great. Any of you out there that don't like it? Boy, are you on the wrong side of history. Then he is on a heavenly movement, as in leading people to heaven. And worst of all, he's found this awful gray area as a priest, where it seems like he can just do and say whatever he wants, because all the bishops and dioceses want nothing to do with him. And I can't blame them. But as we've seen, this rise of political priests is not a good trend, and something needs to be done about it. Our nation and our church need unity. Our nation and our church need love. Our nation and our church need leadership. Father Frank Pavone and his current yeah, rhetoric is divisive, Pavone, hateful, and he's doing it sort of under the guise of being a leader of the Catholic faith. If you're watching this, Father Pavone, let me put it in a phrase maybe you'll listen to. Be best. We don't need priests sowing division and working to make America great again. We weren't made for America. We need priests to, I don't know, make pews full again, make more saints again, make heaven the goal again. I just recommend unplug, get off Twitter, uh, maybe take a break from streaming. Take that picture of Trump down and replace it with Jesus. 
you have a large platform and ending abortion is so important. And it's because of my shared hope and desire to also end abortion that I'm telling you, this obsession with Trump is not helping the mission. It's not helping the pro-life movement. Do these episodes of the End Abortion podcast look like they're focused on ending abortion? No. Let me be clear. We should always protect the unborn and speak out against any injustices against them. And if President Biden's stance on abortion and any future legislation ever endangers them or contradicts the Catholic teaching about abortion, then we should be vocal and speak out against them. But the way to combat these policies is not to get President stuck Trump in the past and believe that this MAGA movement is the answer. It's about moving forward to show our leaders in our country why life deserves to be protected and making our voices heard not with hatred or insults, but with prayer, peace, and love. The question we must all ask ourselves for the path ahead is what is leading the way? Red hats or palm branches? So if you made it to the end of this video and you're like me, uh, a concerned Catholic who just doesn't want to see a priest uh, dividing our nation and our church, uh, please just join me in praying for our clergy, especially Father Lord, Pavone. Uh, I've been praying for him every single day since really I've started this video project. Uh, and I really just do believe he's just kind of lost his way and can get back on track. If you're a bishop or a cardinal or from the USCCB or your uncle is on the USCCB or even any sort of authority in the Catholic Church, uh, y'all, we've got to do something about this. My heart breaks every time I see a response to a tweet like this or the response like this. Political priests leading propaganda prayers will continue to fracture the church if accountability, oversight, and reform aren't introduced in situations like this. I'll leave it up to the people much holier than me to figure out what to do about Father Frank Pavone, but please, do something. Well, at least the election's over and Biden's been president for a month now, so maybe Father Pavone has turned the page and focused on a new top. Aw, oh, crap.